government, you don't like your retirement, where do you go? You don't like your kids' education, where do you go? You have a choice in the private sector. You have accountabilities, competition, good for you, the consumer. Friends, these are challenges that we, we need to think through and, and, and we need to know what we're fighting for and why we're fighting. Taxes, people have talked about taxes here tonight. I, I, you know, we hear a lot about taxes. Why do, why do we think that people should be able to keep more of their money to, to buy their kids school clothes and to make their house payment and make their car payment and save for their children's college education? Why do I fight for that? Why do we fight for that? Abraham Lincoln said something to the effect that we should be able to keep as much of what we earn that with our own hands as possible. And although we have those who oppose us on the tax front, I've never, I've never heard of any of those that oppose us giving any of their tax relief back to the general treasury. Never, never seen that happen. And if you want to get in a short line in life, you get in that line of Americans that believe that they are undertaxed. <laughs> Nobody believes that. And if you've ever heard me speak, you've probably heard me say before, man, we, as a tax man, we get you from the time you get up until the time you die. You get up in the morning, your feet hit the floor, you jump in the shower, we tax your water, you, you put your clothes on, we tax your clothes, you eat your breakfast, we tax your food. Go jump in your car, we tax your car. Stop at the local gas station, get some fuel, we tax your fuel. Go to work, we tax your income. Come home in the evening, flop down in the lazy boy, we tax your furniture. Turn the TV on, we tax your cable. You go to bed at night, you fall on your knees and pray to a true and live in God, you get off your knees, you kiss your spouse, you think that's free, but it's not. There's a marriage tax. <laughs> and so you, you just say, by golly, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of paying taxes. I'll just die. Do it this year because after this year, there's a death tax. <laughs> that's why we fight for tax relief. I go all over this country, I know people that need more money to do what they need to do with it, not what the federal government or the state government needs to do with it. We should never apologize for that. So, why is CPAC important? Why are these type of conferences important? Because these type of conferences encourages you First, to wake up, then you stand up, and then you pray up, and then you speak up for the cause of sustaining the greatness of the United States of America. And friends, we, we are going to, I'm trying to uncomplicate my life. <laughs> friends, let, 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 me, let me tell you something. I believe that this place that you and I call home and the rest of the world this place that you and I call home and the rest of the world calls America it's a pretty special place you think it's not you look at the guy that's standing before you tonight grew up on the east side of the railroad tracks in Eufaula, Oklahoma. When I was a kid growing up, people considered that to be the wrong side of the railroad tracks. Grew up with a mother and a father and a grandmother that refused to let me fail. Coaches who would, teachers who would verbally twist my ear to force me to do what they knew I was capable of doing. Had it not been for those people, very likely J.C. Watts in 1981 could have graduated from a public correctional facility as opposed to a public educational facility, University of Oklahoma. Didn't stop there. 
played professional football, Canadian Football League for five years, got out, was a youth pastor for eight years, ran for state office and won, and ended up representing the 4th District of Oklahoma in the United States House of Representatives. Got a wife that loves me a whole lot more than I deserve. Kids and grandkids that love me, boy, they deserve a whole lot more. But they love me anyway. Friends, I, I just have no complaints. I just, I just have none. And am I heartbroken when I see the fighting and the bickering? I am, but at the same time, I remind myself that that's what makes us different than everybody else. Wayne doesn't have to agree with me. David doesn't have to agree with me. I don't have to agree with Chairman Steele. We, we, we can be individuals. We can disagree with each other. People used to come to my campaign office and, and, and they, would, they would be upset. I don't know why I made notes. I didn't use them. I, I don't. <laughs> People used to come to my campaign office during campaigns and they would pick at my office. Bobby would make my staff so mad and I'd say, no, 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 don't get upset. Take them donuts and milk and coffee. Let's celebrate with them. This is America. They can disagree with their member of Congress. They could say to me, to my face, JC, we think you stink. <laughs> and they didn't get put in meat grinders the way they, the way they did in Iraq. They, they, they didn't. Win. My wife did not. Their, their wives and kids did not have to see them have limbs torn from their bodies because they disagreed with their president or their elected officials. So we need to celebrate the diversity that we have. Friends, let me encourage you to understand this. <clears throat> understand this, however, as I close. There becomes a time, there comes a time for the good of the order. We have to rally around the Tom Prices and the Tom Coburns and the Jim DeMints and the David Pences of the world. You know, the men and women who put themselves on the front line for freedom and opportunity and, 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 and they fight for us. They fight for American values. There comes a time that I said, I don't care how much I'm, I'm, I'm disagreeing with Michael Steele. I'm going to be with him. I don't care how much I disagree with David King. I'm going to be with him. Because I know David's going to be with me about 98% of the time. Michael's going to be with me about 98% of the time. Cleta Mitchell's going to be with me about 98% of the time. Friends, why are we conservative? Why are we Republicans? Why are we conservative Democrats? Because we don't like that group thing. We don't like people telling us you have to be something because you're a woman. You have to think a certain way because you're black. You have to think a certain way if you're white. We don't, that, you know, Republicans usually come from the bottom up, not the top down. And think about the conservative movement. Years ago when the movement started, it started just like the Tea Party. Said, so we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We want a country back. 